and Arizona Christian on a Friday night precursor to the big football game tomorrow between Arizona State and BYU. Get some action on the mat to start off your weekend. Kellen Croxton and myself, Blake Neiman, glad to be with you here tonight. It's good to be back in DFA with some wrestling. Sure is good, and it's going to be a chaotic night to say the least. I think we're going to see a lot of good wrestling, but uh, we're going to see a bit of chaos to uh, a little three-team duel. And Nico Ruiz will start us off over on the NCAA wrestling mat against his opponent from Embry-Riddle. Peyton in Will Prater. As Ruiz quickly gets to a headlock, goes in on the single leg. That will suck that one up. Get right to it off the bat. Yeah, we're seeing down and gets two. Good control early from uh, Ruiz. You know, obviously D1 versus NAI. You want to see, you know, a, a strong start initially. Um, no takedown yet, but he is getting good control. And Ruiz finally awarded the takedown, and he goes right back at that low ankle pick and gets the two once more, three rather. Remember the rule change from last season from the three-point takedown. Now a big advantage in being able to rack up more points consistently. Yeah, and especially you know in a dual environment like this where the teams are a bit further away. Um, Skill-wise, you can see a lot more tech balls and a lot more aggression even looking for major decisions um, with an extra point and a takedown as he goes for some near fall points. Yeah, here is Ruiz looking for that near side tilt. Ruiz, a two-time California State Champion out of the powerhouse in St. John Bosco. Had a standout freshman season last year, going eight and two, including a big win in that duel against Oregon State. Now goes behind after that snap down and another three points for Nico Ruiz, the California native really racking them up now. And trying to get that first period technical fall. Yeah, it seemed like early he was trying to go, you know, get that full tilt, get that four point near fall, but not being able to do that already, you know, six point discrepancy. He's just gonna keep on taking him down, letting him back up and just building that difference early. And Zeke Jones described him, he's like solid like cement. He really is firm in his foundation and he gets a near side tilt. And that will do it. Quick work for Nico Ruiz as he releases the grip. And that's four points for Red. Looks like a couple more points for Ruiz to get to get the tech fall. So 16 to three, lead for Ruiz. Over on the other mat, still no score between Damian Moreno and Nathan Hernandez. Quick cement mixer nearly for Ruiz. Roll through on top and it'll be an escape for one Peyton Proper. Yeah, you can Ruiz imagine. Ruiz right back in on that ankle. He goes around behind and gets the three point takedown. Once again, really active in being able to transition right from the stand up into his leg attacks and that will do it. Didn't take him all, but less than two minutes and 50 seconds to get the tech fall and the victory for ASU to start the night. Yeah, quick start for Ruiz, but you got to remember, he's got to go against Arizona Christian here in an hour or so, so I uh, want to get that match done early. So Ruiz gets the win for ASU to start the night. It is a technical fall, so that'll be 5 nothing ASU to begin the duel against Embry-Riddle over on Matt 2 currently being attended to is... Damian Moreno and his match against Nathan Hernandez. Getting some attention from the Sun Devils training staff. Meanwhile, here on mat one, it is Chance McLean bumping up from his typical 165 to 174 to begin this season. Taking on Daniel Gorshkov. McLean last season, you'll remember Kellen was a you know, consistent guy in the lineup for ASU ended up competing at the Pac-12 Championships where the Sun Devils won the last and final Conference of Champions Championship, winning their 24th as they are the winningest program all time now in Pac-12 history as we knew it. 
Yeah, I mean, ASU these past few years has, you know, been on a tear in the Pac-12. Obviously, Oregon State had that one year where they were sure. able to snag it away. Um, but, yeah, definitely way to end the conference. Um, you know, Chance McLean's kind of in the same situation as Nico Ruiz where he's going to want to start out strong, start out early because, hey, he's got another match against Arizona Christian later tonight. So want to conserve as much energy as you can, get the match done quick. And also, you know, it always feels good to get a tech fall in early. Yeah, ASU 15th according to Flow Wrestling, but with their fellow former conference mates in Oregon State, they sit at just ahead of them in the NWCA coaches poll with ASU at 23rd and Oregon State at 24th. There's some action on Matt two over as Moreno now has some tape around his head to stop some of the wound that he suffered. Trying to work behind Hernandez for the first points of the match near the end of the first period. It gets back into the neutral position. As Moreno has been able to learn behind a national champion in Richard Figueroa. Not in action tonight, but he gets taken down by Hernandez. A nice short little low double. No points awarded yet. It'll be a stalling call against Hernandez and a locking hands call near the end of the period. Yeah, I mean, really fortunate for Moreno not to, you know, get three takedown points. He was trying to, you know, get the circle once he snapped down to try and secure three points of his own. Got back to neutral and, you know, was almost taken down. Not securing hip control was what prevented him. And now 1.2 seconds left in the period. He's just looking to get up. And so it looks like they will add a second to the end of this first period. And it did not appear that there was a locking hands call, even though that's what it appeared the official signaled. So it will just be a stall call. They're having communication with the scoreboard. As for Moreno, over there on mat one, or mat two, pardon. A young and upcoming guy for the Sun Devils. Continuing to learn behind his elder leaders. It looks like we're going to just keep on rolling as Zeke Jones comes to tell the officials, keep things moving all along the night. So we will get started here on mat one between Chance McLean and Daniel Gorshkov. And like we said, McLean, he's in his seventh year of college, taking a grad year to come back, he spent five seasons or four, four seasons at Oklahoma State and now in his second season here at ASU. And charges forward. Yeah, he almost gets that single leg control. Tripod prevents it, but he's snapping down early. Yeah, really aggressive attacks early off the bat for McLean, the graduate student, native of Montana. Goes for the inside trip and circles out and will reset. <laughs> McLean. One of the more consistent guys in a lineup that was injury riddled at some point this last season for ASU. Went 11 and 10 in his first season in Tempe and there's a barrel through single leg. Gets the three points. It was a nice job coming from that high stance and get the high part of the thigh going through the shorter reach rather than going lower, and which is more of a lightweight move. Yeah, I mean, you saw that he had wrist control in neutral, which allowed him to then later snap that hand down and go for, you know, a blast double, but having a little bit of trouble up Working on Working on right that now. cross face, trying to get it into the cradle, and he'll do a mat return as we go out of bounds and reset in center circle. As for his opponent in... Daniel Gorshkov, he's a sophomore out of Moscow, Russia. He went to high school in Los Gatos, California, near the Bay Area. But originally from a wrestling rich country, the only country in the world that has won more Olympic medals than, er than the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, you look at a majority of Olympic wrestling history, especially, you know, in Greco-Roman style wrestling, and, you know, <laughs> that, it's, it's a real hot spot. 
McLean still working on that single leg on the edge, trying to get some points before it goes out of bounds. One minute left in the opening period. Three to one lead for the Sun Devils. Reaches around and gets that trip behind, scoops up the leg. Nice move by McLean on the edge. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing the same strategy as you saw with Rui is, hey, you can't get the near fall points, can't convert um, into a fall or anything like that. Might as well just let him up, take him back down. You know, good feet position to keep him in for that takedown. It's pretty close, but um, I expect a, a similar aggressive response here. And an update on Matt, too. It is a 3-1 to one lead as the end of the second period approaches for the lead for Hernandez of Arizona Christian. Moreno trying to get one near the end of the period, but he will not. As we go back here on Matt one, McLean scooping up the leg, going for that low single this time. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of leg attacks uh, from McLean, specifically single legs, inside trips. Um, Got himself in some trouble as Gorskov will try and reverse him, but he won't be able to. No points awarded to either side. 18.4 seconds left in this first period. 6-2 to two lead for Chance McLean. Gorskov, a NAIA National Championship qualifier last season at 174 pounds. Now back for his sophomore season with Embry-Riddle. He's got that right wrist control again. It looks like he's about to get that inside leg trip or snap down. And time will run out on period number one. It's a four-point advantage for Chance McLean. Well, let's take a peer over at Matt 2 where we are in the third period between Damian Moreno and Nathan Hernandez. Moreno currently in a two-point deficit against Hernandez. Moreno looking to stay on top. Zeke Jones and Lee Pritz both telling Moreno to cut him, and he does. Now in a three-point deficit, needs a takedown in order to get the tie. Yeah, I mean, that was really the right move, though. Starting on top, he couldn't convert to a near fall or anything, so just cut him loose. Three-point takedown rule comes. Here's Moreno on the offensive, using his hands attacks. Here's Hernandez in on a single leg on the right leg. Clock at a minute. Moreno still trying to break the grip of Hernandez. If he breaks that leg free, he can circle, but... And a dangerous position. We will reset neutral. Moreno follows in the suit of many stellar 125 pounders. Brandon Courtney, Richard Figueroa. And he's trying to be up next. The sophomore out of Somerton, Arizona. In on a shot. Tries to find the edge. As Hernandez near his back in, he gets the three-point takedown. All tied up at four. Riding time not a factor for either man. Now this is a point where, you know, one-point escape really comes into play. You got 18 seconds. You can try and go for the near fall points, but the last thing you want to do is allow an escape here. Moreno trying to hold on to the ride. Trying to force overtime, eight seconds left. Hernandez trying to break free. Moreno on in on the legs. Two seconds left. No control. No escape awarded. There was no loss of control per the official. So we will go to overtime. The Arizona Christian coaching staff was not very happy about that, but you know, even as they got up to both standing, they didn't get necessarily to neutral, so that's the right call. Update on that one, 13 to four lead for Chance McLean with under 30 seconds left in the second period. And at overtime we go, first point scored is a win. Moreno trying to find another takedown. Hernandez in on a low double. Oh, he's got the sprawl. A sprawl by if Moreno, trying shoulder. to circle around. Has his arm trapped by Hernandez. Nice. 
trying to work behind, has a grasp of that leg. Looks to step through. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna roll him over. Chance McLean winning by technical fall. And the overtime win for Damian Moreno. Yeah, he tried to circle for a bit there, and then, you know, once he got enough slack uh, in his leg hold, he was able to just rotate those shoulders. Really good comeback win. And I believe that is Moreno's first collegiate win in a duel. So congratulations to that young man, a native Arizonan, getting a victory in this battle of in-state foes in State 48. So the Sun Devils get the victory in both matches. Another technical fall on the Embry-Riddle side. So 10-0 ASU in the Embry-Riddle duel. And a 3-0 overtime decision for ASU in the Arizona Christian side. And so we will stay on mat two as Carter Divert will clash on the edge, looking for the cradle and he has it locked up. Man on his back. Looking for the fall. He's close. Trying to roll it back through, through the other side. He's got it tight. I think he's got it. Trying to step over, now he's flat on his back, and that's Dunzo for Carter Diver. You know, once the cradle, cradle gets rocking, it's one of those risky pins, just because you get rolled through the wrong way, you might end up pulling your, pinning yourself, but, you know, really good to not let him out of that, especially early. Carter Dybert with the pin. Big six point swing for ASU now up nine nothing in the duel against the Firebirds of Arizona Christian. Shea Addison's about to get a cradle and of his now own. Here on the other side, we got Shea Addison with a near side cradle locked up. Trying to cinch it through, has near fall points. Six to one lead for Addison. Less than a minute into the bout. He just had it a little bit too close to him, but. And now he's rolling through. It up. Trying to cinch it up, getting chest to chest, lifting the leg. Oh, that's it. And it's back to back pins for the Sun Devils. Both against their in state foes. Shea Addison, the New Jersey native, gets his hand raised and adds six points to ASU now. 16 0 Sun Devils over Embry Riddle. Yeah, those cradles, you know, especially once you get up to 184, a lot easier to land just because you get them even. And now over on mat two, some action going on at 141. Emilia Esaguere gets an early couple of takedowns with a six to one lead over the Firebirds 41 pounder in Channing Porter. Sun Devils really liking that cradle tonight. Yeah, I mean, Emilio's not far off from that if he can get his right leg freed, but. And it looks like he's got it tight. He's got it locked up. Trying to roll through. Could it be three in a row for ASU? As long as he shifts up a little bit, he should be able to. On his shoulders, turned over. Trying to get flat, has the arm cinched. Trying to get that other shoulder blade to the mat, and he's got it. Make it three in a row for ASU. Fall, fall, and another fall. All by cradle, I, you know. Um, you could say they're rocking their teams <laughs> to bed tonight. That one was a lot closer to getting out though, especially at the end. It looks like he was about to roll through on that right side, but. Um, Make that 15-0 ASU in the Arizona Christian duel. And still 16-0 on the Embry-Riddle side. Well, Colton, Colton Schultz gets thrown to his back quite quickly. No points awarded to either man. 
Got kind of caught by surprise. Smirks at his coaching Eric Thompson, the Sun Devils upper weights coach. Now, hot take here, I don't think Colton Schultz is about to get a cradle right now. Be a little bit more advanced, but. He may be looking for a throw, and oh. he's got the head and arm. Took him to his back. Kenny Copley. Now these heavyweight pin scenarios are almost impossible to get out of, especially Colton gets a little bit more overhead and he's completely got him. Going flat, switching sides. Pulls the arm back, number five in the nation, Colton Schultz, a four-time All-American. National runner-up a few years ago to Gable Stevenson, who's rumored to be coming back to the game, Kellen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he had to stay with the WWE a little bit with the Buffalo Bills. Even the Bills organization didn't say they were necessarily done with him. Um, but, hey, maybe he'll finish that pipeline someday. Schultz will go back to his feet along with Copley. Schultz coming a match short of the Olympic Games in Paris, falling in the Greco-Roman finals in State College. Now gets to solely focus on folk style for pretty much the first time in his collegiate career. Yeah, I mean, especially last year, he missed, you know, the majority of the beginning of the season. Even, you know, some key duels where uh, the Sun Devils lost key points. I mean, that was a theme of the past two seasons where they would be up high in, you know, the first five weight classes, and especially heavyweight. They had issues with pins and everything, but now finally being back, he's, you know, looking to make a statement in this match. Colin goes with a shuck by, and then he clears through. And over on mat two, it looks like we have a final decision by fall. Mikey Ramos coming out victorious in that one. So make that 21-0 ASU over Arizona Christian. Looks like Schultz is setting up for another head throw. Up tie, in the tie for both of these heavyweights. Colton Schultz takes him to his back with the bear hug. Looking for the fall and he's got it. Well, when it's a night of pin parties, the king pin had to get in on the action. Yeah, you gotta think some of these ASU wrestlers saw their schedule tonight, saw, hey, I, I have to wrestle two matches, or hey, you know, I want to chill out, be done early, and might as well try and get the pin as early as possible. And that will make it now 22 to nothing. Arizona State, they completely sweep that Embry-Riddle side. Ironically, we haven't had a, a normal match in tonight. We've had falls and we've had a sudden victory win, but we haven't had just a, a regular decision. Not quite yet. As we will go over to mat number two, where it is one Michael Kilich out of the state of Georgia for ASU against Nicholas DeHart out of Arizona Christian. Stalling warning early on here against DeHart. Kilich is trying to, he was going for wrist control a bit earlier, but now he's really just trying to get those near fall points. Kilich went four and two at the Keystone Classic last year at three major decisions. And a perfect three and oh at the Journeyman, Journeyman Classic. Rated once as the number 13 prospect by Flow Wrestling during his high school days two-time national champion. Well, he's about to get him on his back, but, you know, especially with these mid to lighter weight classes, it's a lot harder to get those, you know, back near fall points just because guys can roll through so much easier. Killer's looking for that ball and chain tilt. 60 arm through and brings him back. Trying to get that shoulder turn beyond the 90 degree points. He gets a couple of swipes. And that's all he'll get. We get five nothing now for the Sun Devils. Yeah, I mean two near fall points is nice, but 
obviously 30 seconds left in the period. He's probably he has one more near fall tilt. He can probably get. Killage looking to lock up a cradle like many of his teammates have tonight. It must have been something that they've been working on in practice this week. Yeah, one of the longer pins, though. Seven seconds left in the period. You know, um, I think he's going to be pretty satisfied with the 5-0, but maybe, you know, he wants to start on top. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see what he's going for. He starts on bottom. He's going to want to get the takedown point, get back to neutral, get another three, and just start going for the tech fall. But if he really wants to set the record, and ASU wants to do the most cradles in a single night, you know, he might start on top and just try and tilt through. Nicholas DeHart. 5'11 junior out of Clovis, New Mexico. Previously wrestled at Fresno City College. As Killers continues to set the tone on top. Don't see too many wrestlers from the south find their way out west to a program like ASU, but Killage has. Flattens his man on top. A significant riding time up to three minutes and 15 seconds. Sun Devils have not lost a match. They have not won a match less than bonus points. Only one of those matches by Damian Moreno on that three to nothing overtime victory. Yeah. 125. Riding time really hasn't been a factor in any match. I mean, it's all been bonus. You can kind of look at Moreno's because he got the riding point from getting it down a point to 40 something seconds and that allowed it to go to sudden victory, but for the most part. Killich trying to turn through. He's got the takedown and then some 8-1. Might see a little half Nelson action here, a little JV classic. <laughs> you use that back in your day? <laughs> you I know, know I sure did. Freshman year, that was, that was the pin of choice. It is still a good go-to move. Never hurts to go away from the fundamentals. Killich on top left in 50 seconds left in the second period. Nine to one lead for the ASU 157 pounder. ASU losing its original 157 pounder to Corey Teamer to Iowa. Now suiting up for the Hawkeyes along with Kyle Parco. It was at 149, both of them heading over to Iowa. Wrestle for the Hawkeyes and try and win their national championship there after their significant contributions to Arizona State. Yeah, I mean, the match was so quick we didn't even cover it, but it looked like Matt Ramos is still coming out a bit frustrated just uh, losing his longtime training partner, Kyle Parco. It seemed those two were always knotted up in practice. So they'll have to adjust to life without them. As we begin the second upper half of the ASU weights against the Arizona Christian Firebirds. It will be Austin Scott, I believe, for Arizona State. We'll be wrestling against change at the last minute. A bit of confusion at the scores table. Still looking through it, but it appears. We'll get the names right here real quick. So Carlo Castanetti for Arizona Christian and for ASU. Get the name right here in just a second. As wrestlers get underway, which is about 30 seconds in. Giovanni Major for the Sun Devils. Getting some action, and he's in on a low single on the right side. It's Castanetti countering with an armbar. Major, a freshman out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
Force things back into neutral position. And Kilic comes away with the technical fall. Concluding that Arizona Christian side. As now 27-0 the lead for ASU in that Arizona Christian duel and they can continue it at 165 pounds. Major trying to turn through and get the takedown. Just about 90 seconds left in this first period. Yeah, Looking I mean, for the cross face and he's got three. Yeah, it looked like he was gonna originally turn through, didn't get the hips released and was like, hey, I'll just take you know, your hips. And now he's, with a minute left, he's trying to get some back points. Major captured a perfect 40-0 season in his final year in the Rocky Mountain State, his second straight state championship. Prominent prep career. Went to Falcon High School. Became the first individual state champion since 1989 from Falcon High. Of those 40 wins his senior season, 20 of the, 29 of them by pin, including his semifinal match to move on to the state finals. He's a rough position now as he gets reversed. Just a one point advantage now as the roll through by Castanetti puts him on top. Close to a potentially dangerous position there. Um, but I mean, now you're going to see the period right out. Major gets a late loss of control and he gets the escape with it. Nice short time move by Major and he'll go up too heading into the second period. Yeah, I mean, he had great you know, control, um, lost it a bit, especially with the knee. Um, you know, got lifted, reversed, but a good way to end the period. Obviously, it's always nice that escape, you know, you can get it with 10 seconds left in the period, gives you another point. Um, especially now, because you can go for another escape and change it back to, uh, you know, a three-point difference. And then yeah. ASU, if anything's continuous, is going to three-point takedown here. Major quick move right out the gate, does the spin and the switch. He gets right back on top and goes to work. Six to two now for the rookie Sun Devil. Major with needs the headlock and Castanetti will get one and away. Yeah, Major needed to break down that tripod there if you want to continue, but you know, it hasn't been the biggest issue for Sun Devil wrestlers tonight to let the next guy up and you know go for another takedown now that it's a two point difference. Things will get going again on mat two on the other side between Arizona Christian and Embry Riddle. A near seatbelt toss by Major, but he gets flipped back on top by Castanetti. Yeah, just not enough momentum there. I mean, he was good uh, with his patience earlier. Uh, Castanetti was about to give him an inside throw, but uh, you know, another rough position. 40 seconds left. He can get a reverse or another take or, uh, escape right now. And correction, it is Carlo Castagnaro wrestling for Arizona. Christian, the 5'10 grad student native of Tucson, Arizona. All his years spent here with Arizona Christian. Ranked top 20 in a NIA rankings a couple of years ago. And a national qualifier in 2022. Close match on hand here on the NCAA wrestling mat. Seven to six, slim advantage for Major, Giovanni Major, and ASU. Good one going into the third. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, other than uh, Moreno's match, this is the closest one we've had all night. But, um, you know, just a few costly positions, um, you know, that have led to reversals or takedowns. But ASU's been pretty dominant in this match. 
in terms of ride time. Just a few bad rotations has led to takedowns. Riding time not an advantage for any guy at the moment. 7-7 seven, seven all. All evened up. This is the tightest, second tightest match we've seen tonight outside of Damian Moreno to kick things off. Castagnero. Shoots with a single leg, but now he's lost shoulder control. Battling with Major, Castagnero planning to join the U.S. Air Force upon his graduate degree from ACU. Ironically, the Air Force base in Colorado Springs, where Major is from. Maybe a little homecoming. I mean, a lot of people go home after college for a little bit, and he just might be going for a little bit longer. Major gets snapped down by Castagnero. 45 left, 7-7 seven, seven tie. ACU trying to snag its first points of the evening for any team against ASU. A chance for the Firebirds to spark a little bit of life. Yeah, I mean, this is the second time this period that Castagnero's had that good snap down position with two inside hooks. Um, interesting, especially as time winds down and they're back to neutral. Um, you know, no shoulder rotation or anything. Again, the push pull signals from Zeke Jones. Trying to score with short time, 20 seconds remaining in the match in regulation. He has wrist control. I mean, this is what your cue for a shot would be. Castagnero goes for a shot, spins away, goes for a reshot inside. Got the fireman's carry going for a round, and he's got the three-point takedown. Short time. And Giovanni Major out of Colorado Springs, the rookie, gets the victory. Man, the Sun Devils are really liking to either finish matches very early or last second. Um, you know, great takedown position, specifically that he was already so close to circling around. So Giovanni Major comes out on top. And so the Sun Devils remain unbeaten on the evening. And now it makes it 30-0 ASU over Arizona Christian. A pause in the Embry-Riddle duel as Embry-Riddle and ACU wrestle over on mat two. But the Sun Devils with a significant advantage, 22 to nothing in that one as well. So now we bump up to 174 here in this ASU versus ACU duel. It'll be Max Willner for the Sun Devils against Keaton Martin from ACU. Wilner has been a mainstay for ASU. Amidst the room, has had his points and times in which he has been able to show what he's got. He also switched up his haircut this year, a little bit less curly. Yeah, I mean, actually a lot less curly. It seems <laughs> like he typically went for the uh, the perm the past few years, but uh, sure. seems to be working for him so far. Seems pretty aggressive. Already got one lat drop in, and uh, you know this is a. Uh, this is looking like Colton Schultz's type of wrestling match. A lot of uh, Greco moves so Wilner far. Wilner goes up and he brings it down. Three nothing lead for Max Wilner. He's put on some weight in recent years. Uh, his freshman season was getting some time in the 157 weight class when Jacory Teamer was battling with that injury that sidelined him for the whole year. But he's come through for ASU in some critical spots throughout his years. Now a redshirt junior, went three and three last year in duels for ASU. Competing against North Carolina, Lock Haven, Missouri, CSU, Bakersfield, and Oklahoma State. The Sun Devils will compete with on Sunday in Stillwater. Here's a tilt move. He's got a four point tilt from that. Piers the ref is signaling two or three. Didn't appear to get the four swipes. And it will be three points for Wilner. So he 
gains a six to nothing advantage. He's got him in another bad position. Looking for the arm bar. Trying to scoop up the chin. Wilner, a native of Costa Mesa, California. Product of Fountain Valley High School. Looking for the pin. That should be it. And he's got it. Wilner just with some straight up brute force wrestling. Imposing it as well. He's put on some pounds and he's, it looks like it's done well for him. Yeah, I mean, he, he almost turned the shoulder about 30 seconds prior and just finally, um, you know, brought him a little bit back towards the mat. You know, that's not a lot easier too when you're thir turning those shoulders. A lot of pins, a lot of wins for ASU so far. Now 36-0 against their in-state foe. Bump it up to 184. Shea Addison in action once again. He got, he got the victory by fall against Embry Riddle. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice if his night ended two matches under one period, you know. Looks like a bit of a size matchup here. He goes right away into that outside high crotch, and he gets around, looks for the cradle nearly, and he goes behind. He's making quick work. Looks like he's going to get some offensive mat time, a little bit more than the last time. Yeah, I mean... Even from neutral, he's completely gaining hand control. Addison from the powerhouse wrestling state of New Jersey. Zeke Jones and company have done a good job of tapping into that eastern part of the country. A beautiful move on that outside high C. Great feel coming around. Now 6-1 to one lead for Addison. So tapping into those states like Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Even going up to... Who we'll see next in Damian Shucky going up into the Midwest of Minnesota. Trying to really make it a nationwide program. Yeah, especially, I mean, for the Addison family, his older brother wrestled at Stanford That's for right. a number of years. Yes. So um, obviously it helps to always have somebody to spar with in your own house. That's D1 level. And Stanford, a former counterpart to the Sun Devils in the Pac-12 going back and forth there. Here's a tilt by Addison rolling through. He's getting swipes with it. And he gets the four count. 10 to one lead for Shea Addison. Four and oh last week, now on a five match winning streak with the win earlier tonight. And now gets three more points on the tilt. He's really finding his element. Going to have to step up, likely into that 184 spot with the loss of Tony Negron. Maxed out his eligibility last season with the Sun Devils. Here's another third tilt for Addison. And gets another four count. Yeah, he's, he's just purely going for the tech ball here. And he's got it. And another impressive showing by Shea Addison. The future at 184 pounds for Arizona State. Gets his second bonus point victory. First match of fall, second to tech fall. I mean, looked very smooth. Very smooth, and, and, and ASU's gonna need it. Tony Negron was one of ASU's better wrestlers at the upper weights last season, and Addison is proving that he can try and fill that void. Yeah, I mean, Tony Negron, of course, coming from unanimous number one team, Penn State. Um, you know, very notable wrestler for ASU. Although, you know, the Achilles heel of Tony Negron was would wrestle fantastic outside the top 15 rankings. And then once you put a top guy in there, just kind of his aggressiveness wasn't there. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Shea Addison does. Again, much younger guy. So um, whenever we get those matchups, it'll be good. And so here we go to 197. It is a 41 to zero lead for Arizona State over Arizona Christian. Battle of the Valley, Arizona Christian located not too far away from Tempe over in Glendale. Yeah, Michael Private Moreno. NAIA school. Michael Moreno got billed out a little bit tonight. Uh, he was, you know, slated for two 197 matchups, but Embry Riddle not having a 197 pounder. He's just got this one match. So adds a little bit of pressure because you want to win the one match that you have. But um, 
It's going to be interesting. So there we go with my calculations. I knew I was off on the Embry-Riddle, so that makes it 28 nothing with the forfeit to Damian Shunky. We'll get back to Embry-Riddle action just a little bit after this, but for now it's Shunky and Moreno. Shunky, like I was mentioning, from the state, great state of Minnesota. A lot of wonderful wrestling there, as we were talking about earlier. Gable Stevenson wrestling for the University of Minnesota, where he won two national championships, went on to win gold in Tokyo. Now, Stevenson comes back. Does he go back to Minnesota? Who knows, man? <laughs> Colton Sultz has got the heavyweight locked down here in Tempe. And maybe we'll see a rematch of their 2021 or 2022 NCAA Finals. Memory evades me. Now, if you didn't need any more incentive for Shunky to show out, uh, you know, former ASU 133-pounder Mikel McGee just arrived, you know, obviously want to show out for your former teammates. And Brandon Courtney sitting right, behind, right beside him, two of the mainstays at the lightweight division for ASU in recent years. Courtney, a four-time All-American for ASU, finishing third his senior season, along with Mikhail McGee, a multiple-time All-American himself. And now the director of recruitment for Sun Devil Wrestling. Sun Devil just wrapping up several members of their signing class. It's Zeke Jones excited for the future. Many of the prospects they have coming into the program. Yeah, even past two, three years, all of the Sun Devils have been a top 10, 15 team. Offensive efficiency-wise, they actually outpaced Iowa and Penn State for those. So, you know, as a recruit, you know, especially a lightweight, having the most efficient offense uh, through the first five weight classes, that's, you know, if you want to get recruited by those guys. It's like it's lightweight you almost, the way ASU has produced national champion. Recently at 125 in Richard Figueroa. I uh, just went to a screening last night with Zeke Jones and the crew of the new Unstoppable movie about Anthony Robles, 125 pound national champion. Inspirational figure, one of the most inspirational stories in sport and Shunky with the big go behind and duck under. Makes it three nothing quick score before the end of the first period, but for those who will see it, when it comes out on December 6th, it's quite an inspiring story of Anthony Robles to see not only what he has gone through on the mat, but off the mat as well. Yeah, not too many fireworks going on in this, uh, you know, 197 matchup with Shunky. Still 3-0 in the first period. This has been one of the lower scoring first periods. Chunky trying to get his offensive groove going. Pardon me, Chunky out of South Dakota. I was mixing him up with his fellow 197 counterpart in Jacob Meisner out of Maple Grove. Chunky out of Brandon, South Dakota, Brandon Valley High School, studying psychology here at ASU. A three-time state champ. At 160 pounds and 182 pounds, ranked ninth in his in his class in the country for his weight class. Shunky with the score 3-0, he really wants to avoid those near fall points. Another thing he has to watch out for is that the ride time has already hit 30 seconds, and you know you get this whole period away. Oh, Shunky with the quick reverse finds his way back on top, and a five nothing lead. Winding down on the riding time. That's the situation you want to be in. It got a bit scary. You give up a minute of ride time, a point, and the other guy gets a takedown on you, and all of a sudden they get the, you know, win off a of ride time. But Chunky looking down. for a little bit of a tilt on the right side. Under 45 seconds left, trying to go the bow and arrow route. Can't quite thread the needle. So go free, and it's 5-1. Shunky saw some significant action in duels with ASU kind of thin at 197 pounds last year. Went two and nine, making four appearances in duels against both Lehigh, Stanford, Missouri, and North Carolina. Yeah, and 197 has, you know, other than 285 with Colton Schultz and all of his Greco 
um, participation. 197 ever since Cordell Norfleet left two years yes, ago has Cordell really Norfleet. been um, a struggle point for ASU, and they're still looking for you know their long-time solution. Trying to fill that void at the upper weights. It's been the missing piece to the full collective of truly unlocking the ultimate potential of ASU wrestling. Yeah, truly the, the bridge weight before heavyweight because it kind of tells you, you know, going into that heavyweight matchup, like, hey, we need, you know, a major here. Hey, we need a fall here. It determines how much pressure is inevitably on Colton Schultz. You just need that one extra guy, especially coming around NCAA tournament time, to get those team points in order to compete with the gauntlet that is Penn State. Yeah, and I mean, you know, one of the huge advantages of Penn State is that they All-American at essentially every weight class. And as a team, you know, Arizona State's going to, of course, benefit in those lightweights and occasionally heavyweights. But, you know, even those weight classes that you're not going to win a national championship at, you know, getting those All-Americans is what really helps your team and your development out. ASU has several qualifiers for the NCAA tournament last season. Looked to have some more this year. Shunky in a bit of trouble on his back. He gets reversed, and now there's some near fall. Moreno on top. Four Three near points, fall points. Four points awaiting for him. He has the lead. Now looking to end it. With now Shunky going from the other side. Four points awarded on that near fall to Moreno. One point escape for Shunky. It is now 7-6, the lead for Moreno. Shunky's got to work quick. He's down one with 42 seconds to go. Working in that Russian tie, hand fighting he goes. He needs to either look for a snap to get that single leg. Oh, almost gets that double. Teammate Jacob Meisner watching on from behind him. All eyes on Damian Chunky and Michael Moreno. He's running out of time to circle. He needs to, you know, shoot within the next few Quick seconds. Quick move by Chunky, duck under and threads it through. Explosive move by Damian Chunky. And he'll march onward to victory. You know, if the guy stops you with his hands, to prevents you from getting the blast double, duck under, great move. You don't have to waste all the time in circling. You know, 15 seconds left in the match. You gotta have something inside and quick like that. Outside, you gotta do the whole circle in. And Zeke Jones just walked by. He said, I didn't know he could get that low. How about that? Well, yes, he can. Chunky showing off a little bit of explosiveness as the Sun Devils remain unbeaten against ACU in this duel. Now a 44 to nothing advantage. And looking to cap it off is Sun Devils heavyweight, Phil Shavat, the backup to Colton Schultz. Out of the, some of my home area in the Pacific Northwest, out of the state of Washington. Now you talk about a different type of pressure. Instead of thinking about winning the duel, it's, hey, you're pitching the shutout right now. Can you keep it going? Especially once you get to the heavyweight, you're the last guy on the list. He'll be taking on Caden Cis Cisneros. Here's Shabbat. And a headlock. Cisneros with control. Yeah, that's the risky part about, you know, going for a double leg shot as a heavyweight is the other guy sprawls on you. It's a pretty good defense just because of the sheer amount of weight, loses his overhead strength in that. Shabbat with a red shirt last year, native of Port Orchard, Washington. Earned Washington's 182 pound state title as a senior. He's put on significant weight since then. But it'll be the backup to one of the best heavyweights in the whole nation. Described by his head coach as big, strong, and driven. 
Comes from a family that includes that of ASU wrestling enthusiast and ASU baseball coach, Willie Bloomquist. He is also a native of the state of Washington. Got to find out the true full relationship status there. Didn't know that about Shabbat. Decided to compete in Fargo this summer to reach his full potential. And starting to try and tap into it, being surrounded by the greats here at ASU. Some good crowd trickling in, few fans on hand here on this Friday night. I'm sure we'll see many of them at the football game tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good gig. You got two wrestling duels for the price of one on Friday night. Saturday afternoon, right after you... Uh, watch Ohio State, Indiana, you'll be at the stadium watching BYU, Arizona State. I will say those tickets are expensive for tomorrow's game, but this is not too bad. 24 seconds left in period number one. Between Shabbat and Cisneros. Oh, this is looking like your typical high-scoring Greco matchup that you got here. I mean, you've seen Shabbat almost go for an ankle pick, but um, really it's been a lot of hand fighting, a lot of inside tie control. But, hey, these things usually don't go to major decision. They're usually two-point winner or fall. And this is a good response as a whole for ASU just in terms of a duel, you know, coming off a tough loss to – Illinois on the road in Bethlehem, 37 to six, now on the brink of a 47 to nothing shutout. Yeah, and I mean, you know, for a lot of these younger guys or, you know, guys that have sat behind, you know, Ja'Cory Teamer, or Kyle Parko, or, you know, all the chaos that's gone on at the heavier weights, you know, it's good to get in front of a crowd, build some confidence, you know, especially after a tough loss. Remember that you like it's still feeling good so far this season. I mean, it's still early in the season. That was their first dual loss, and um, you know, good momentum before Oklahoma State. And I was talking to Zeke the other day on the new Sun Devil Wrestling show that you can check out on the Sun Devil Athletics YouTube channel, and he talked about how there's like a difference between just wrestling and actually competing, because a lot of these guys have been wrestling and going through the motions with each other. But until you're lined up against someone else really going at it in live action, you got to learn the difference between just competing and trying to just win. Yeah, I mean, you think about, uh, you know, wrestling these guys every day in practice. Obviously, everyone has certain moves that they're more comfortable with. I mean, you can even look back to, you know, Kyle Parko. He was so comfortable with that inside head throw. And um, it's like if you're practicing against him every day, like naturally if you it, he hits it on you 50 times a day, you're going to respond differently than, you know, somebody would at NCAA and so just to get that different response that different level of competition because I'm sure you know Mikey Ramos after getting thrown the 30th time that day he acts differently good little blast double by Caden Cisneros he has the first three points in this heavyweight bout Cisneros has the bar looking for the half on the other side short time left in the second period ASU trying to hold on for the complete shutout against ACU. Meanwhile, some action resurfacing in the Embry-Riddle ASU duel. That is Max Brewster over on Matt two, getting going with Nathan Hernandez, or excuse me, with Abraham Pablo. Nothing too crazy so far with uh, that 125 duel. Max Brewster's just trying to break him down, get an inside leg as he gets shot on. He gets brought down. That'll be the first points of the match for Emery Riddle. As it is Landon Smith who takes him down. Still a close match here on mat number one. A 4-1 to one lead for Cadence Cisneros, but... 
Kale Shabbat does need a takedown. The man from the Apple State. Minute left in the match. Using some of those head fakes and deflections. A shot fake to that right leg quickly. You're seeing a variety from Shabbat. Uh, first, the inside fake, the, the lat drop. Almost on 30 seconds left, you know. You got to conjure up something as he goes for a blast double. Now, with the weight, how do you avoid getting sprawled on with a 280 pounder on top of you? He's stuck into the headlock from Cisneros. We'll call a stalemate, stalemate, and reset in the center circle NCAA logo. Same logo that many will hope to see come next March. 10 seconds winding down and looks like ASU will end with just one loss. And ACU will have some points to go back to Glendale with. Caden Cisneros emerges, emerges victorious, has some family in the stands to support him. Good for him, he gets the victory. And ASU still comes away with the win in the duel, 44 to three, the final. Sun Devils earn their second duel victory of the season. As we head back over to mat number two to round off our evening slates, it is a three nothing lead still off of that takedown from Landon Smith. Had that nice blast double off the match. And they start in neutral position with Max Brewster trying to get going. Dangerous Brewster position gets for taken Brewster. to his back, and Smith with another nasty throw, trying to lock up a cradle. You know, it's mo sometimes it's mainly the upper weights who can be tossing bodies around, but don't be sleeping on the lightweights and the damage they can do on the upper body. Yeah, it seems like both takedowns have really just been a counter shot and waiting for um, Brewster to you know, show some aggression and go for a shot and just responding instantly to that. Max Brewster. It's been a guy who has stuck around here with the Sun Devils behind the scenes in the shadows. Brewster from Santa Rosa Fl Beach, Florida junior coming from the palm trees of the southeast the palm trees of the southwest two-time state placer and a florida high school 1a state champion at 120 pounds 55 and one as a senior getting some rare dual action get some of these in-state foes 10 seconds winding down here in period number two. Almost got thrown again with a few seconds left, but now game plan, third period. Landon Smith really evoking that pressure. He's got the arm sleeve wrapped around him, protector of that shoulder. It'll be a neutral start to the third, six to one lead. The man out of Embry Riddle, Landon Smith. Your Brewster here. This is the one period where you don't want to get taken down. Obviously, you can go for, you know, a shot, get up to four points, and then try and get a three-point near fall. Or, you know, if you think you really have it, shot, escape, and shot again. But Smith blast double. This has been the theme he's got so far. To his back, he's trying to clear all the body. He's losing. He's got some near fall. Losing strength. Brewster on his back. And we'll turn back to his belly. It'll be four points for Embry-Riddle. Now another turn, turn attempt by Smith. An NAIA National Championship qualifier a year ago. Placed fifth in the Cascade Collegiate Conference Championships and second at the Doan Open. 
Also qualified for the national championships the year before, two-time national qualifier. Yeah, Brewster would have to, you know, hope for some scramble magic and get some crazy bad cradle positioning. Um, but for the most part, this has been the theme of this match, and it looks like Arizona Embry Riddle is going to come away with their first win in this duel. Stalling point awarded to Smith. That against Brewster. So 20 seconds remaining. It's 14 to 2. Brewster trying to hang on and prevent bonus points. Smith trying to attack. Secure the first tech fall of the evening for any opponent, and they do. Strong showing from Smith, the two-time national qualifier at the NAIA level. Yeah, I mean, that was just- That was a competitive effort. Excellent shot selection, especially, you know, unusual strength for what you see at 125, just being able to create those um, lower body shots and just throws. Emory Riddle in. ACU finishing up their duel on mat number one, but we'll stay on mat number two as it will be Carter Diver. Once again, he had the quick pin in less than a minute. Let us not forget. And we'll now be taking on Alan Hendricks. And Early Diver gets leg. right back to work once again. He's so quick to get in on those legs and can get up the body fast. Diver to really strong and stout, technically very sound wrestler. Out of Murraysville, Pennsylvania, and Franklin Regional High School, the same high school as Spencer Lee. Iowa Hawkeye legend, near four-time national champion. Until an upset in the semifinals against the man from Purdue. That shocked the college wrestling world. Diver trying to. Diver looking for the tilt. Down. He's up 6 1. Trying to break that arm free so he can get the shoulder control. Got the arm bar latched up and got some near fall. Trying to go bonus for bonus. Score update on the Embry Riddle duel. It is now 28 to 5. ASU still leads. But. The Falcons able to snag some points thanks to Landon Smith. Divert angling back once again, has some swipes, four swipes. Yeah, he's just gonna consistently roll for four point near falls, even probably let him go here and take another shot. While Julian Klebo works back to full strength, Diver really showing some promise. Shall the Sun Devils need to call upon his name during the season? I mean, you know, next guy up, this is, you know, the aggression that you want to see if you're, you know, someone's injured and you want to show, but dangerous position from here. Former Pennsylvania State champion, three and seven last year in his second season in Tempe. Appeared in duels against Lock Haven, Missouri and Stanford. Now here's Alan Hendricks trying to turn around and score his first reversal of the match. Meanwhile, Divert spinning through. A bit of a stalling stage. And it'll be three another three points, points near fall. I'll complete the tech. I mean, Diver completes the tech. 17 to 2 is second bonus point victory of the evening. Lots of bonus to go around. Techs and falls. Looked like we were about to go into the second period there, create some distance and, you know, elongate the tech. But he was able to circle around and after a little scramble action. They get 33 to 5 now, Arizona State. As the talented. 141 pounder. There's Emilio Esaguere. Face off. 
against Christian Lopez. Issa Guerre, a two-time Arizona State champion, product of Valiant Prep in Eloy, Arizona. A Flow Wrestling did a documentary on them. Him and his brother, who just signed their whole family and the culture they got going in their garage and just the boys out west. The Eloy boys, man, they they have something special brewing out there. And tight family culture that they've helped bring to Tempe. Circle around by Isaguere. And he gets the three point takedown. Yeah, there was actually a Sun Double wrestler last year, Diego Chavez, no longer with the team, but his family built a wrestling facility out in Eloy just because of that environment and you know how many guys out there just like to consistently wrestle and so much that you build one in your house. And Diego Chavez, a very fine academic student as well. He's going to do good in life regardless. Seguere, single leg, turns it into a takedown. Now a quick 92 jump out lead for Emilio. Quick snaps, hard snaps, really showing off that physicality. Isaguere oh, competed in the Pac-12 Championships two years ago. Made it all the way to the final, but came up short in his pursuit of an NCAA tournament bid but for coming in late to fill in for an injured Jesse Vasquez who will see on tap at 149 bumping up a weight class this season As Vasquez, Vasquez coming into his first season fully healthy and yeah, seems Aguirre like turning around and he's got the takedown looking for some back points too he's not even trying for the pin very distant you know, one of the unusual forms of getting back points. Just the well, he distance. does so, and he cinches up the technical fall. Back-to-back -back bonuses for ASU. Tally on another five to their point total, and it's 38 to five. Sun Devils. And now we get to see Mr. Sparky himself, Jesse Vasquez. The longtime Sun Devil who brings the juice, he brings the energy. The king of the slick savages will take the mat. Bumping up to 149 this season, Jesse saying that he feels as good as ever, as at peace at ever coming into this season. Healthy coming into one for the first time in his college career. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the wrestlers that, you know, when they were on the mat, they were good, but there was a lot of time where they weren't, and now with a Arizona State team that looks very different this year compared to years past. It's, you know, good to see one of the staples of that team three years ago is back and healthy. A native of Southern California. An NCAA qualifier a year ago, rated top 15 nationally in the 149 weight class. Taking over for Kyle Parco at this 149 spot. Bumping up from his typical 141. Just wants to be comfortable, wants to go out there and wrestle and focus solely on that. He's also in strong pursuit of his degree, trying to wrap up his studies. Focus on the important things in life and not get too caught up in the idea of cutting weight. And I think that's a very mature mindset that Vasquez has taken on. Yeah, and I mean, especially, I mean, 141 and 149 can be tough. Obviously not as tough as, you know, cutting weight at 125, especially if you're, you know, a taller guy. But, you know, with those middleweights and really up until the heavyweights, that can hugely impact your life as a student athlete. Vasquez presuming in disciplinary studies 
here at ASU. His opponent is Jonah Chu. Vasquez has shown sparks of his flashing potential, a radiating prospect out of the Golden State, four-time California State champion. At three different schools. This is a potentially troubling position for Vasquez here. Chu putting Vasquez in a difficult spot. That arm of right arm of Vasquez is presenting preventing the circle. There's just 40 seconds left, but um, you know, he might be in a good position now as Chu's so compressed. Vasquez and Chu will reset. Chu out of Pearl City, Hawaii. Senior for Emory Riddle. A national championship qualifier in each of the last two seasons. And a Cascade Collegiate Conference All-Conference member at 149 a season ago. 15 seconds left, Vasquez in on a shot. He's got the highlight, turning it into a double, and he's got it. Talk about end of the period, edge of the mat. Um, you know, Vasquez being a senior, that's a really experienced position to put yourself in. Head through hips. Jesse Vasquez gets the three-point takedown. <clears throat> into the second period we go. The second to last of matches tonight for Arizona State before they head to Stillwater on Sunday to take on the Magic Man-led OK State Cowboys. Should be interesting. That's going to be a tough duel. I mean, you talk about, you know, number 13, Illinois, being a tough duel and, you know, the result that, you know, unfortunately ASU came out with uh, for the team in that one. Going against Oklahoma State, that's always been a chaotic duel. And now it just adds the extra bit of juice considering, you know, David Taylor, one of the legends in the sport, stepping away from the game that he loved so much and was so successful at, an Olympic champion, a two-time national champion, world champion multiple times. And now stepping into his new era as the head coach at Oklahoma State. In his first taste of the coaching game, something that Zeke has become embellished it, Zeke Jones now in his 10th season at the helm here in Tempe. Multiple top seven finishes, four straight at the NCAA championships and getting his first national champion since the Heat Valencia last year with Richard Figueroa. Many close calls though. I mean, can't count the number of times Brandon Courtney's been. Brandon Courtney, Mikhail McGee, Kyle Parko, Ja'Cory Teamer was in the finals last year. Even Colton Schultz when uh, Gable Stevenson was in his sure. prime. Sure, several finalists over his years, but getting to that ultimate mountaintop is the ultimate mission of every wrestler. He did it twice. Figueroa did it once. Who will be the next? Vasquez out on top. He says that's part of his aspirations. He's got the raw talent to do it, but the injuries have hampered him in recent years. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, almost inevitably Vasquez is going to, you know, make the NCAA tournament this year, and almost inevitably he'll see former teammate Kyle Parko in there. And so, you know, not a ton of practice against each other, being 141 and 149 last year respectively, but, you know, that could be an interesting atmosphere at Nationals this year. Quick little turnover here on Matt One. But yes, Vasquez with a legit shot at the 149 weight class. And it's gonna be intriguing to see how he does 
being able to just more focus on the wrestling aspect of it and less on the waiting cut weight. Vasquez, nice reaction, reshot in there for another three point takedown. 12 4 lead down for Vasquez, under two minutes to go in the match. Vasquez looking to add to that domination. Yeah, he got himself in a rough position, you know, early being down 4 1, but. A good response. Every good wrestler has a better response. Ditching the. Uh, Ditching the arm sleep. <laughs> But um, yeah, him and uh, you know Max Wilner are the two uh, new hairstyles on the team so far this year, and uh, he had a little sleeve over to cover his cornrows. But now, third period, minute left, gotta ditch it. Gotta show off the flow. Short time for Vasquez, under a minute to go. Looking ahead for the Sun Devils. After OK State, they have the ever prestigious Cliff Keen invite in Las Vegas on December 6th. Before a long month off in the month of December, they don't resume action until they take on California Baptist on January 12th to begin they're playing, and then they'll begin Big 12 play against Northern Iowa on January 17th here at home in Tempe. Whether that be in Mullet or DFA, that's the fun part of it is they get to kind of experience both, and I talked to Zeke about that. Here's Vasquez hit on a shot on the right leg. Circles back around, trying to get some points near the end of the period, add to the bonus effort, and he gets the three. 15 to five, it will be Vasquez trying to finish out on top, and he does. It's a major decision for Vasquez. Add four points to it, 42 to five, the lead. Lone match for Vasquez tonight. A Little bit of rust to knock off, but he's healthy and he's happy and he's got a smile on his face. Yeah, and uh, Always stuff to improve, and that's the thing about Zeke Jones' squad, Kellen, is that he's talked about it's not how you start a season or even how you are in the middle of the season. At the end of the day, the goal is March. And when March come around, the Sun Devils seem to show up. Yeah, and I mean, I've talked with Zeke in the past um, extensively about this, but it's, it's so interesting with wrestling because a large majority of the regular season is just, you know, practicing it's and developed. getting better. It's, you know, it has largely no impact. It has, you know, seeding for... Uh, Big 12 championship, but other than that, I mean, at the end of the day, whether you're the one seed or you know the last seed in your division, you're it's the same bracket. It doesn't you know change that much. So here is Austin Scott and Sam Humphrey to round off these evening's duels. As you well locked up the victory in this one, 42 to five. I'm looking to cap it off with a win. From Scott, who's in a bit of a trouble situation right now, is Humphrey able to work himself back around? Roll through attempt. He's getting caught on the roll through though, and that could you know, put him in a really dangerous position. Scott trying to fight for the stalemate. And he's preventing that left leg. Scott, oh. the native of Tucson, Arizona. All right, ASU, a two-time state champion at Mesa's Mountain View. Spent his first couple of college seasons at Oregon State, where he was 13-9 and nine over his two years in Corvallis. Oregon State, kind of the surprising Arizona State rival these past few years in you know, Pac-12 wrestling. And getting some spirits and and look, you know, I'm from Corvallis, and that program is really starting to build something up there special. So is ASU. Is a lo they've long been Pac-12 foes, and it's sad to see that they won't compete again. But it's good to see each of them carve their own ways. And I think the Big 12 is a significant jump in terms of competition for Arizona State. Yeah, I mean, 
other than you know a few um you know a few guys at Stanford um you know Evan Wick at Cal Poly you really you had a few wrestlers from each weight class that would test the Arizona State roster um but Oregon State was really the only one just because 165 through 197 especially post Anthony Valencia was a really weak point for Arizona State and that's where Oregon State was able to capitalize. Looking at the rest of the Big 12, Oklahoma State leading the conference with the number three national ranking. The next highest Big 12 team, number nine, Missouri. Followed by number 12, Iowa State. Number 14, Northern Iowa. Prior to that, number 13, South Dakota State, who is in the Big 12 as well. Well, you look down the list, it just keeps on going. Number 22, Oklahoma. Number 23, Arizona State. So of all the top 25 teams, ASU's in the very bottom of all the top 25 Big 12 programs. And again, it's a it's going to be a gauntlet of a conference. Yeah, and I mean, you look forward all the way to January 17th. Back here in Tempe, I mean, you're going to see Northern Iowa, typically a, you know, a smaller program, give Arizona State a real test. Claw ride from Austin Scott. They're trying to give him three, and they do give him three. Hangs on for the takedown near the end of period number one. The only points of the period. But so that is one, two. That is seven top 25 teams for the Big 12. And ASU seventh of those of those top seven Big 12 teams. And now they're gonna get a top three matchup in Stillwater on Sunday. Surely should open some eyes about where the Sun Devils need to get to by the time March rolls around. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a different environment, especially with the amount of, you know, their approach and the amount of guys that are gonna be able to go to the NCAA tournament just because, you know, it's a much, each weight class is much more competitive than you saw in you know, Pac-12 wrestling and, you know, 125s probably, you know, surefire, 149 you could see it, 285, but other than that, it's going to... Scott gets rolled through real quick. As Humphrey trying to hook his neck. Yeah, he is trying to get at the neck of Scott. That's one way to get near fall points. Indeed. Under 90 seconds left in period number two. Like a really awkward position for both wrestlers right now. Yeah, pretty much after today, Kellen, Sun Devil's not back here in Tempe for competition until January 17th, nearly two months. Yeah, I mean, the California Baptist duel is going to be interesting. Obviously, Cliff King and Invitational, always a staple every season. I think it's going to be, you know, that's where you'll see a lot more individual you know, how guys do. Usually, you know, Arizona State's able to come with at least a few guys getting an individual title. Yeah, and Zeke was talking about it to me the other day. He was saying, guys need about 10 matches to really get that rust off. And he's been trying to get that build up before the CKLV. He's been ramping it up in practice, more live competitions in practice. Here's Austin Scott threading the needle with a half. Nelson looking for the fall he's and he's got it. Got it. Why Quick not end ball. it with a pin? On a night that it's been pins across the board. Contrary Austin to Scott slams it down with the fall. You know, contrary to how they ended the match against Arizona Christian with their only loss of the duel. You know, close match ending with the pin. That's definitely the way. One of the night and hey, both duels, they only lost one match each. Quite impressive. A total of five falls in that duel for ASU against Embry Riddle. And now two heavyweights.
വേറെ കാണുള്ളപ്പാ ஒரு இரநூறு கேன் கிடச்சுன்னா வெளியே போகலாம் ஒரு ஆளா வெளியே போகாத பிறகு எதுவுமே இருக்கான் 